So, life restoration. Um, I'm here with Jason, Eric, and Robin. That's me. We started addiction chat on a Twitter, a little thing that actually ended up getting millions of impressions each week on Twitter way back in 2012. And we've been doing lots of stuff since then. We've evolved. We are all into authenticity and being yourself and teaching people how to be who they really are and uncover that. And some of our main influencers, influences, things that we like, meditation, self-awareness, Gary V in business, everyone from Oprah to Tony Robbins, Kyle Cease, Dr. Joe Dispenza is a big one with the neuroscience and Super Soul Sessions with the OWN Network. And so we just want to bring you on this adventure we call life with our new station, Life Restoration. What, what say you guys? What can you expect from listening to our station? Lots of funny things. Yeah. Much Gee. laughter. Laughter? If you can't laugh at yourself, then I don't know. I don't know what the quote is. But. I would say that there's infinite possibilities of us going in any direction at any, any point time. in time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All of the above. Uh, so I don't think there's any topic we would not tackle. No. Nope. Uh, any word we would not use. No. Uh, any place we would not go. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So. Any story we haven't already heard. <laughs> any, yeah. Any experience someone's had that we probably haven't been through ourselves. Yep. No, we've definitely been through it. We are counselors, life coaches, parents, spouses. What else are we? Clients. <laughs> Me and my member, I'm a client. I'm the, I'm the hair club president. Yes. Yes. So, um, we're people. Yeah. yeah. That really is all it is. All those other things, those labels, are, we are not. Yeah. Who we are, are are people that are dedicated to living out this life's best and laughing at ourselves along the way. That's good. I know. <laughs> when we come down to business, I know how to yeah. tune it in to Bring it back hashtags home. and yeah. tweets and... So what is the catchphrases? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is the greatest piece of advice for today as it pertains to life restoration? The greatest piece. Forget, piece forget of everything advice. you thought you knew about everything. Right? Isn't that how it goes? Yes. Yes. That's forget good everything. Point. Good place to start. Yes. Is to <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to forget all that and so it's not so much as forgetting it's what you think you know in your brain not forgetting who you are and where you came from but forgetting what you think you know about everything in life yeah and setting it aside to unfold into something greater than that because what we know is that what we think is what limits us to experience what is as well as what could be in the future. So. Yeah. I think that goes back to like what I just experienced on my trip, like you know what I thought based on what I experienced in the past was, uh, you know, my idea of what could take place versus what could actually take place, the possibilities of what could take place, and opening myself up, like you're saying, to saying like I have no idea, I don't know. Um, it enabled me to experience something different than I'd ever been able to experience before. In a way I'd never been able to experience it before and in a way that I never would have been able to plan to experience it. Yeah. You know? So but it goes it does it goes back to am I willing to try unwind, unthink, unlearn yeah. the stuff that I'm so married to that makes me feel comfortable. Addicted to. Yeah, addicted yeah. to that makes me feel so comfortable. You know? you know, being married to something is one thing. Being addicted to it is a whole nother thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. get your fix. And that's one. That's that's 
it's interesting to see how often I'm bumping into that right now. Like how often I'm bumping into what I'm addicted to still, you know? And um, that's the cool part, you know? It's not anything but cool. I mean, it's in my mind. It's cool, you know, bump into it, become aware of it, and then step out of it and into who I really am versus tapping back into that every time as a source of some type of fake fulfillment so it's uh but yeah that's a, that's the adventure right is like getting in that place of can you teach a person that which they think they already know you know and can a person learn that which they think they already know or experience something that they think they already know yeah they can the champ is here yeah <clears throat> watch his toes yeah watch okay. the real star of the show yeah Shut the door. So, here I got it. So, something that reminds me of is um, what you were just saying. Another thing that comes to mind when we say can I versus will I. So, you want to unpack that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that there's a lot of unpacking there today anyway, except for just... Uh, You know, whether or not we think we can, or even whether or not we say we will, is really what I'm finding out. Point, it's pointless uh, because we have no idea if we can. Our own perception, that limiting thought, is a limiting thought. So then, will I becomes this limiting thought in regards to anything else outside of this moment in time and so what we are doing is learning to live in this moment in time and and be willing can I in this moment in time and then will I in this moment in time not based on the results or what we think but just simply what is and are we willing to experience something different than what we are currently experiencing. Not saying that what we are experiencing is good, bad, or indifferent. That is irrelevant to yeah. the adventure. The adventure is the willingness. Can I? Yeah, I can go on an, on the adventure. Will I in this moment? Not will I tomorrow or the next day or the next day, but right now in this moment, will I experience something different than what I currently am experiencing? Good. And for us to even know if what we are experiencing is its fullest in the moment in time, for us to even know that, we have to be willing to experience something else. Yeah. To know that what we are experiencing is all that this moment has to offer us. Right. So. And I think it's important to note that we stopped using that word journey a long time ago. And it's all an adventure. You know, a lot of people are still using that word, too. Yeah. The journey? It's a journey. You know, life's journey. And I think that's that's control. Uh, we want to control things, and the mind is control. And so the journey is something that you control. You decide if you're on the journey or off the journey type of thing. Can you and turn it louder? It in an adventure is a surprise. The journey is like yeah. something that you planned. Yeah, it's like a trip. An adventure is you know free falling out of a plane. Yeah. 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 Like you have no freaking clue what's getting ready to happen next. Right. And you can be surprised and in love every minute of it versus trying to dictate or pre program every experience and moment in time. I think one of the things that, because there's probably people tuning in to this that obviously have, don't know us. And don't know where we're coming from and what we've been through totally but um i think one of the things to tap into there is that no, but you what is our experience with the, what's the danger i guess you'd say i don't know if danger is the right word but with people who are looking at life restoration life change um and looking at it as a journey because you use the word control right because it's control but there's some experiences that we've all had with when we looked at it as a journey and we were taught to look at it as a journey 
uh, that might be beneficial for us to kick around too because I know that that going from that transition where we all looked at it as a journey to how we're experiencing it today as a, yeah. as an adventure um, to me that was a big shift yeah. like that just in and of itself was you know a big pendulum swing to something totally different um, that really opened us up to look at things differently so I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that or well, and I think one important in. thing to point out is just that we are evolving all the time. So even if we, you know, had certain thoughts or beliefs um, and different things based on our experiences and knowledge and understanding of them a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, we are constantly evolving and learning new information, applying that information and, you know, like you said, trying to live in the present. Yeah. I just know that with a lot of people that would be tuning in, the journey word is very familiar. Oh, yeah. Because, like you said. Even in the industry, it's Yeah, it's, it's, still, it's still real popular right now. It's a big, yeah. hey, you know, and it's catchy, and it sounds really cool, you know. Right. Because, oh, you know, instead of journey. saying. It was my cancer journey. Yeah. You know, Robin's it, journey. Robin's journey. Uh, you know, my recovery at one point in time was, you know, my yeah. journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh. We, we thought about starting a recovery group called, called The, the Journey, Journey yeah. before Celebrate Recovery and Rick Warren and all his cronies out there in California took that and ran with it yeah. while back. And so The Journey's been a part of our vocabulary in life for a minute. And um, I think just looking at things for what they are, not what we want them to be, is the pendulum swing from being on a journey to being on an adventure. Um, the journey is codependent by nature. And so people might want to know what that means. I don't even know what that means. What that means is that uh, the old story is okay and suffering is okay and that's what we tell ourselves in our mind is that oh, okay we're we're on this journey we're suffering still but it's okay and because the event it's part of the journey right right yeah. then the adventure <clears throat> says you know no that's not okay and we are going to present ourselves or position ourselves to experience life and to do that you are not in control of what you get to experience you're placing yourself out on the ledge, free falling uh, off the cliff, and being who you were created to be in the moment, not on some stupid journey that uh, never allows you to get past your current state of yeah. life. I, I think when, when I one of the things looking back, that I look at with the the dangers of the journey for me was is I, is when you're on a journey. There's like a path, a specific path, like a way you're gonna go yep. that you're looking forward, and anything that is not that path is quote bad or you've done something wrong or um, you need to do more of X type of mentality versus, and then you start stacking chips and the good and bad columns. Well, you can't be on two different journeys apparently at the same time. Right. <laughs> Maybe that would be a good yeah, way yeah. to describe it. Yeah, you can't be on multiple journeys. Yeah. Right. So it keeps right. you very one dimensional. Yes. yes. And says this is the only way you can experience it and any other experience than this must be not your journey or you ventured off into the wrong yeah, you're journey. You're not on this journey. You're not on this journey. Right. Because you're not living out this pre programmed thing that we have said that you're going to live out based on whatever I mean religion politics recovery uh, the medical system counseling uh, you name it everything has its own programmed journey a starting point and uh, Probably not an ending point. So lots of much, guardrails. But lots of guardrails, yeah. yeah. And lots of don't do this, do this. And lots of um, this is good, that's bad yeah. type of yeah. 
communication well, and mentality. All of that being extremely limiting. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and keeping someone in a place called this is all there could be or is, you know, versus something that's very expansive. You know, there the other the other danger to that is the mindset of we're not saying you, this enables you to go do and and recklessly live your life based on your insanity. We're not talking about throwing yourself into harm's way because you don't want to walk some journey out. Yeah. At some point, this all comes down to you know, knowing who you are, where you are, and where you came from. And until you can answer those three questions, you are not on any kind of journey or an adventure. adventure. Yeah. Right. You don't get to participate no, that you're, way. You're just a full of shit and running around banging into stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, like you were before. Yeah. You know, whether you're on or off substances or right. whatever, it doesn't matter. You're not you're not in the flow or on the journey, you know. And I think that's where some people will will hear me or they'll hear us, they'll hear you and they'll say, oh, danger, danger, you know, what right. these people are just talking about, some willy-nilly craziness, and that's, uh, that's not the truth. The Part simple, programming. the simple willingness to identify the undeniable things in your life that allow you to know who you are, where you are, and where you came from, takes more um, discipline than any of these other systems and and uh, programs put together. I mean, it is a, can I, do I have the ability to answer these questions, oh and then will I see them for what they are, not for what I want them to be, and accept them so that I can surrender to infinite possibilities. Right. Yeah. And that's there's, a huge part. There's a lot more work involved in, in working and in fi in figuring out who you are. Mm -hmm. versus going somewhere and letting them tell you who you Which are. Which is what a journey is. Yeah. A, yeah. a journey is you go sit down, here's here's who you are and here's where you're going. Right? And uh, that's not necessarily, it's not who people are. You know, like it's it's not, you and I have been through that. You know, you know, for years we went through that situation and put ourselves in that situation of having things dictate or people dictate or try to dictate that. You know, and it's ineffective. It doesn't work. It confuses people. And we saw the rotating doors of guys and gals coming in and out, suffering yeah. over and over and right. over again because it's not them discovering who they are. It's somebody trying to tell them who somebody else was, and then you need to be like whoever this other entity is that's not you. It's them, you know. Uh, so it's, to my mind, it's it's not about like you said, a free range. Like, hey, just this is an open ticket to just go do whatever the hell you want to do. It's it's about opening yourself up to discover who you truly are, and that's hard. That's it's scary. It's hard. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's much easier to be told who you are. Yeah. Well, or what you want. Well, it's, it's easier to, to avoid the conversation altogether. You know, we have, we have a friend that we were talking about that with earlier. That and I won't say names, but it's like somebody made the comment like he needs to find God. You know, and I'm like he needs to find God. God's not lost. He needs to find himself. That's the scariest thing that he's avoided for the last several years. Yeah. That most people avoid is they'll say, well, I just lost God. No, no, bro. You didn't... He, lost your way. You lost, your, lost your way. Lost your journey. No. Right. You don't know who you are. You lost yourself. Yeah. You know, because you've avoided who you really are because that's what you don't want to deal with. It's easier to go out here and deal with all this other stuff that's out external versus internal. Yeah. And so you get caught up in all that stuff. I was going to bring up something Dr. Joe Dispenza says. By the time you're 35... You're living by a already existing set of memorized emotions, mm -hmm. feelings, habits based on your experiences. And so they've done the neuroscience and put the thing on people's heads and know that each person has between 60 and 70,000 thoughts every single day. Mm -hmm. But of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts, 
ninety percent of them are the same as the day before, yeah. as the day before, as the day before. Yep. So if you're living by old those old feelings and experiences, then you are having the same things happen, then you're run, running off those same old emotions, and then that's what builds that cycle of insanity. So it's that 10% of, you know, the what's not not the subconscious, you know, running on that consciously changing that other 90%. So, yeah, it is difficult. And it, it, it's, it's, I would say, the world um, as humans, humanity, we have become, in the last recent years, more willing to better ourselves and take a look, real look at the mirror instead of just pretending everything was all together and perfect, but we still have a long way to go, you know? You know, I, I think another thing to talk about, and we can talk about in the future, but just to bring it up for a minute here, is the difference. What I hear a lot of people say in regards to this type of topic, self-improvement, <laughs> self-help, all those types of things, um, they immediately... <laughs> because the way in which they've been programmed look at you as some narcissistic freak that is deluded in self and um, you know that is not what this is about no. yeah. uh, and that response to me is a childish response to the willingness to yeah. look at yourself and be who you are. Or look at something you don't even, might not understand. Right. <laughs> even, that to me is also a sign of, I've already got a pre-planned response to anything outside of X, which is whatever my comfort zone is. For some people it's psychology, for some people it's religion, for some people it's politics or whatever it is. But I've got my definitions of how things are, all nice and neat, stacked up over here. And right. you, what you're saying matches my definition of, you know, why, which is narcissistic, because that's where it's something I've read or programmed or whatever, because it didn't match something I'm comfortable with, and I'm not willing to open myself up to say, and hear, what's really taking place here? And, and you know, the question that that I've always found powerful in that situation is if something's bothering me, you know, about something, somebody, or something, um, I learned a long time ago, it's not there's not something wrong with them. There's not something, it, something's rubbing me, and it's something I'm seeing in myself that's causing me to feel that way. So the best thing I can do is ask myself a question of, what is it about these words or this person or this video or whatever it is that I'm doing that has ruffled my feathers? Because that opens me up to experience more than what I've currently experienced in the past versus stiff arm, label, judge, and file. Yeah. And we do that to the people that are supposed to be close. To Mr. Mommy. Yeah. Hey, we're trying to do a podcast over here. Yeah, bro. dude. And so we're, good. we're cool if you're in here and all, but you got to pipe it down a little bit. Robin mentioned we all have kids. So yeah. there'll be uh, instances where they run in and maybe hit us with toys or just sing random songs as a uh, commercial break. Yes, absolutely. And we're married. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, uh, I think that was um, a really good start. Um, I was a little distracted from a kid that's trying to put his head inside of my sweater, yeah. but he is the cutest thing ever. Yeah. And he's gonna have his own podcast soon with his little buddy Cash, Cross and Cash. Yep. Right. Yeah. Say coming to you live. So I think over the coming next couple weeks. Or through your poop. <laughs> yeah. No poop talk. Yeah. I think over the next couple yeah. of weeks, uh, we will yeah. talk a little bit more about ourselves and our adventure that got us to this point while opening up into some of these topics in which we've brought up tonight as well as new topics that you may have for us out there, questions and we appreciate you participating with us and uh, becoming a part of our lives and our restoration. And uh, we look forward to getting on this adventure with you as well.